Washington's New Adult Guardianship Law, What You Should Know, by Brianna Cross Bean. There are new adult guardianship laws going into effect next year. It's important for older and disabled adults, along with their caregivers, to be aware of these changes. In 2019, the Washington State Legislature passed the Uniform Guardianship Act, called the UGA, which codified, is codified as Chapter 11.130 RCW. It applies to both minor and adult guardianships. The minor guardianship portion went into effect in January 2021. The adult guardianship portion, which this article will focus on, goes into effect in January 2022. Before we dive into the new law changes, let's discuss what adult guardianship actually is. There are two main protective mechanisms to assist an, an individual who cannot make decisions for themselves. A durable power of attorney, called a DPOA, and guardianships. An adult guardianship is a core process to determine whether an individual is able to make medical and financial decisions for themselves. In other words, whether they are incapacitated. If a court, rather than a doctor, determines that an individual is incapacitated, it will then approve someone to be that individual's guardian. A guardianship is restrictive and takes away rights. As such, it should only be done as a last resort. An easy way to avoid guardianship is for an individual to attain a durable power of attorney prior to becoming incapacitated. A durable power of attorney allows an individual to have someone of their own choosing make medical and financial decisions on their behalf. There's no court involvement and that individual's rights are preserved. Sometimes a durable power of attorney is not possible and a guardianship is required. There are many, many changes to the pre-existing statute. The legislative intent is to make guardianship more person-centered and easier to understand. It is a complete overhaul of pre-existing guardianship statutes and case law. One of the more obvious changes is the titles and roles. For example, the incapacitated person slash alleged incapacitated person will be for will be referred to as adult subject to guardianship or individual subject to conservatorship or respondent. The guardian for the person for making medical decisions will be referred to as guardian. The guardian of the estate for making financial decisions will be referred to as conservator. The guardian ad litem a person who investigates the guardianship, if guardianship is necessary, will change to court visitor. There will also be brand new forms and procedures, as well as a brand new emergency guardianship procedure. The fact that there are new procedures is especially problematic. Over time, Washington courts and attorneys have developed and perfected policies and procedures. As judges and attorneys learn and adapt to those new procedures, there's a significant risk of inconsistent and unpredictable results. Another related aspect is a pre-existing case law, which helps address and correct problems with laws, is not going to be carried forward. The results in a blank slate of sort is a blank blank Thanks, slate of sorts. New cases will have to be brought before the courts to correct problems that arise. It's also unclear how the pre existing guardianships will transition into the procedures under the new laws. This opens the question as to whether there will be additional requirements imposed on the guardians. An aspect of the Uniform Guardianship Act that is especially different from Washington's current laws is the emergency guardianship provisions. Currently, an individual has to be notified before they're placed in a guardianship. Under the new laws, 
an emergency guardianship can be enacted without a person's knowledge for a period of 48 hours. They have to be notified after that, but it's concerning because a lot can happen in 48 hours with a guardian who's a bad actor. Typically, emerging emergency guardianships are only done when there's a risk of significant harm to the person. It remains to be seen whether this delay in notice will have a negative effect on the individuals meant to be protected. So how uniform is this Uniform Guardianship Act? Not very. To date, Maine is the only other state that's adopted the Uniform Guardianship Act, and it did so in September 2019. A meeting, a meeting with the Maine guardianship attorney provided insight regarding how the UGA may look in Washington. The UGA has actually been an improvement for Maine for the most part. This is because Maine's guardianship, guardianship rules were not well structured to begin with. The Uniform Guardianship Act has provided a lot of clarity to a, some of its unclear statutes. This is in contrast to the Washington statutes, which are robust and detailed. One aspect of the Uniform Guardianship Act that has been especially difficult in Maine is the recording, is the reporting requirements. In Washington and other states, guardians are required to file periodic reports on the incapacitated individuals they're serving. Reports under the UGA have been very difficult for guardians to complete and each county has imposed different requirements. Another issue, another issue has been, the investigations done by court visitors, formerly called GALs. This is, this is very little training in the court visitors and the pay is very low. Consequently, there's a significant risk of guardianship investigations being done poorly and quickly. In Washington, most GALs are attorneys who are very familiar with guardianship laws and the training program is extensive. Hopefully, Washington will transition most of its GAL trainings to the court visitor training. G UGA has been met with strong oppositions by a number of groups, including the Washington Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. The author is the chair of the Academy of Elder Law Attorneys for Washington and they've created a guardianship subcommittee to address the UGA from multiple perspectives. One of, our, one of the focus areas will be working with the state legislature to make improvements as problems arise. They need your help to do that. If you have any positive or negative stories to share about the current guardianship laws and procedures, please email them to attorney Bean at outlook.com. Let me repeat that. Attorney Bean, B-E-A-N, Attorney Bean at outlook.com. Next year, we will be requesting stories from those affected by the new UGA. The UGA is a new animal and it remains to be seen whether it will be a friend or foe. 